are hibiscus mead? What does it taste like after one year? So yeah, this was bottled May 18th, 2021. Today is middle of May, 2022. That's a year. It's hibiscus mead and it is 11.8% ABV. And this is from one of those bottles where I did not put the um, final gravity. So we don't really know offhand, but, but I know it was, it was started April 13th. And all links to all the previous videos will be in the description below. So yeah, this was bottled after just like six weeks, so. It's, it was fairly young when it was bottled. I don't even really remember if this was any good or not. I have absolutely no idea. Oh wait, color and clarity. It is crystal clear. And it's this beautiful- Rose. Reddish. It's like a rich red orange. Yeah. It's, like a burnt orange even. Yeah, it's beautiful. It actually, you know what it looks, I hate to say it, it looks like bourbon. It does, it looks like bourbon. It's a reddish bourbon. Yeah. Don't smell like bourbon. No. It smells really nice. I get honey and the hibiscus through on that. Yeah. Um, a little bit of citrus too. We probably put orange rind or something in here. And we've noticed that hibiscus does have a citrus note to it as well. So it could just be the hibiscus. Yeah. But on the nose, it's really, really nice. Nothing rough, nothing um, untoward, nothing you don't want. No, it, it actually reminds me of a, a wine on the nose. Well, it sort of is wine. Yeah, really. but. I know a lot of people don't say that meat is wine. I still consider meat to be wine. Just as much as fermented blueberries is wine. Fermented apples can be wine. Uh, although it can be cider too. You know what I mean. Hmm. It's a little thinner than I really wanted, but it's not like thin. No. It has a cooling effect. It does. Even though this is cold, this is not cold. This is room temperature, which for us is like 75 degrees Fahrenheit or so, um, which it could be slightly cooler because of the room it was in. It does kind of have a cooling effect, almost not minty, but that idea. Yeah. Okay, let me take you on the travel. On the entrance, I actually get a slight touch of sweetness. Not a lot of sweetness, but a little bit. And then I get the, almost like a cranberry tartness, and that's the hibiscus. Then it turns into a little bit floral berry honey. Honey, 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 all through. And then in the end, it goes a little bit astringent, a little bit, not bitter, but edging that way. And I think that's the acidity of the hibiscus as well. It's it just a touch of acidity. And then um, the finish is rather short. Mouthfeel? A little bit lighter than I'd like. Just a point or two lighter than than a, than a great mouthfeel, let's put it that way. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm getting, for me personally, I'm getting more of a berry sweetness where, like Brian said, mm. it's sweet but tart. Yeah. And that's kind of the combo I'm getting. I'm not really getting the strong honey notes that, that Brian oh, wow. okay. is getting. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have more then to find out. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not there. It's just each person's perception is different because our lives are different and we come to those perceptions from different places. I do feel like I share Brian's- The berry comes through though, yeah. Uh, opinion that it's, it seems Less of a mouthfeel than I would have wanted. Yeah, it needs a little bit more tannin, just a touch. It's not, again, like, it, that's gonna ding it from being an 11. Right. That's all I'm gonna give away for right now. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the thing. We, we do this on purpose to analyze. And we're, was I to go back and make this recipe again, now I know I would add something to add some tannins to this. Right off the bat, that would be something I would add. I might even add something to, um, to take the acidity down slightly. I think I might even go so far as to want to back sweeten it slightly. That would I, help. I think that would counter the uh, acidity and... Now that you're talking about that, let's, let's get into that a little bit. Sure. There's different things you can do, okay? If this is a little too acidic or it's a little too thin, adding sweetness can help, but it's also masking those things, not really correcting. 
However, at the end of the day, if you like the way it tastes, was it wrong? No, it's just one way of doing it. Another way is to actually make sure there's less acidity, okay? Which in this would be difficult because it's an acidic type of thing. The hibiscus is yeah. acidic. Um, but we can up the tannin level to make that mouth feel richer. That way it helps to balance because there's the three elements. You have tannins, acidity, and sweetness. There's more, but those are the three big ones. And if your tannins and your acidity are already a little out of whack, sweetness might be the way to go. Or just reduce the amount of acid, increase the amount of tannin, now it brings the sweetness back into, into a balance. Yeah. It, it's just, it's the, uh, the trifecta. It's all just playing with how that triangle fits together. Right now, our triangle is really, like, we have a very, now it, you get the point. It, there's just not enough sweetness here to balance <laughs> off the acidity and the tannins. But if there was more tannins, I don't think we'd need as much sweetness to offset the acidity. It is possible. It's possible. We won't know until we try. And I really like hibiscus things, so yeah. the idea that we could potentially revisit this and make another one is actually pretty strong. And I already know a couple things I do differently too. Now, part of the reason why we were so inspired to make this is because as we were trying to create our Viking blood clone, we started off with a hibiscus mead and then continued further to try to replicate a yep. Smod's version. Now, the difference is we made that one a lot sweeter. Yes, but it was so good before we continue that we're like, you know mm. what? We really need to make a hibiscus meat. So I think the sweetness level in that mm -hmm. one, even though probably too much for a standalone, might be really what's missing in this. Yeah. To because I don't think hibiscus can, needs sweetness or it tastes really bitter. Right, because it it is naturally uh, acidic. Yeah, astringent. And astringent yeah. that. I, I think it does need that sweetness. Mm, I agree. I'm not, I'm not saying anything different. I know a few things I would do differently. There's other things that I would add to this that I'm not going to say in this video that would help to round this out more and bring some sweetness back, but also take the tart berry flavor down a note, taking the acidity down. Um, so there's, there's ways of handling that. And there's, there's a couple things I'm, I'm considering. Now, we'll see what we do. I know, I'm being obtuse. But He's sorry. being obtuse, and maybe I'm gonna root for him now, but you oh, know. Oh, here we go. She's gonna tell you what I'm, gonna, what I'm thinking. I'm right. thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, so what are we thinking? We're thinking this is too, really, too strong on the acid side and too weak on the tannin side. So typically, when we were making a recipe, we like to use tea mm -hmm. as our tannin additive because we have a ridiculous amount of tea. Uh, and because it. Just it works is, for the way we like it. It is easily readable mm -hmm. for everybody everywhere across the world. So sure. go team. Um, are there other ways to get tannins into brews? Yes. Mm -hmm. And now that it's already been created, one of the ways to get a tannin into a brew oh, yeah. is to oak it. We could do that. So that would give us more tannins. We can also still add tea to it. And it would also potentially round out some of those rough edges. So oaking might solve all the problems without even having to back sweeten it. So yeah. who knows? But that's definitely a route we could go. Um, we can back sweeten it now if we wish. That's the route we can go. We can do both. We could fortify it. We could fortify it, yep. We can, well, we could fortify it and then back sweeten it. That way we don't even have to worry about pasteurization. Yeah. And that way it would make it more like the Viking blog. But in this, I think, I think I could handle it because at 11.8, I don't even taste alcohol. Yeah. It tastes like kind of a tart juice. Yeah, it does. And that's because there's just not enough mouthfeel. Um, the flavor itself is not bad. Um, it's just not spectacular. This, I'm not going to call this a fail because it's certainly not a fail. No. I just think it has quite a bit of room to grow and it could be much better. And I, I already know a few things. I mean, I'm thinking hibiscus as the forefront, a few different kinds of fruits added to this could enhance that enough to make it taste more fruity and less just hibiscus, if that makes any sense. Because hibiscus mixed with other fruits usually works really, really well. Hibiscus alone needs a lot of sweetness to overcome it. So that's where that's where my head is. But I'm also thinking potentially oaking it. So yeah, I, I am thinking oaking it or adding tea and oaking it. I think adding tea first, see how that comes out. And if it needs it, add oak. Um, for an oak though, I mean there's, or a wood, I should say wood, not just oak. Yeah. 
I'm thinking something more neutral, like the sugar maple or something like that, that doesn't add a lot of its own flavors because I don't necessarily want this to taste woody. No. So you gotta be careful when you oak too, that you don't go with Yeah, this, this might strong. be a very gentle oaking, yeah. not an extended period the of time. The flavor okay. is not super strong. It's a little more subtle. Yeah. Um, and that's why I don't think a strong wood w is, would be a good idea. And I think Brian's analogy with the color being like a rosé, I think falls through with the flavor as well. It has that light, wine thing going for mm -hmm. it, which makes me want to drink this along with food. So I think this would be a great uh, beverage for food pairings. Yeah, light flavors, more florally, more subtle. It's not a bold flavor. This isn't a smack you in the face kind of flavor, which that's nice once in a while. Um, and I'm now that we're drinking more of it, I'm enjoying it a little bit more. It's I expected the thick, rich, viscous, hibiscus mead from the first time we made it, this is not that. This is a light floral, fruity wine mead rather than really being a, a bold thing. So it's very different. And as I'm getting adjusted to what it is, I can appreciate it for what it is more, which that's an interesting thing. What you expect it to be and what it turns out to be can totally change how you feel about a brew. That's why one day you might love it, the next day you might hate it. Yeah. So uh, we celebrated with my family Mother's Day yesterday and I drank sangria. And so now my mind is, is bouncing back to that with those citrusy fruity notes going, oh, this would be a really great sangria base. When Brian was talking about adding more fruit flavors to it, yeah, I'm like, oh, you could totally throw some fruit juice in there or That would also be sweetening it on the fly there. and that kind of thing. And that would be lovely. It would also take down that acidity level just a little bit too. Yeah. And that, I think that's important. As you said though, drink this with food, I think, yes. Drinking it alone, it's not as much of an experience. It's less complex. Um, it's four or five notes rather than the 18 to 25 that we're used to. So it's, it's just got a few less things going for it, making it Less interesting. Yeah. I hate to even say that, but it is. It's less interesting than I than I expected it to be. And so I'm bouncing back and forth in my head about what numbers I want to give this because there's so many different parameters of when you're trying to categorize something. Is it, are you categorizing it on its own merits? Are you categorizing it compared to something else? Do you have a mm. preconceived notion of what you were looking for? And did it go that direction? Did it go a different direction and you find that better? Uh, there's so many different things and so I keep changing my numbers based on where where I'm at. So initially, my thought was that we were going to try to replicate the hibiscus mead, like I mentioned before. Going off of that, this is like a two. Right. Um, it's nothing like it. So that super rich, super sweet, viscous. Yeah, it's not mead. It, that this isn't that anymore. This isn't even re remotely in the same category as that. So that is disappointing because that's that memory is what our target was. But now as its own beverage, I think it's a really nice yeah. light wine style beverage. I, I, I would be shocked if the final gravity was higher than 1.002. Yeah, it, it tastes it's very low. dry. Yeah. Um, so being that and being what our preferences are, typically, that would get, want me to bump, bump the number to a higher number because mm. I, I think it's doing well for a, not an overly complicated and a, and a dry wine. I think it's it's actually quite nice. Yeah. My take on it when I when I go to give a score is, we have an Inigo sighting. Hold on. Come here, buddy. Oh, you want to say hello? This is Inigo. He's our youngest. And he's had a rough day today. He's also dead. He's a little boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you tell? Anyway, um, my take whenever I go to judge something like this is I look at it on its own merit. I say, okay, if someone handed me a glass of this and didn't tell me anything about it, what would I think of it? And that's how I'm going to do my score. You can do yours however you want. The paradigm can be whatever you want it to be. This is like the Drew Carey show where, you know, whose line is it anyway? I think it's good for us to try the to rules be on are the same all made page. up and the scores don't matter. Because otherwise the comparison of our scores right. don't really make any sense. This is why we don't watch the video of the making of or anything like that. I, I couldn't even tell you what the ingredients are or how much we used. Okay. Pretty sure there was hibiscus in it. Yeah. And honey. Pretty sure there was honey in it and probably yeast. 
Beyond that, we really don't know. And people have criticized us for that. But I think it makes us less partial because I went into this with an expectation thinking, I remember why we made it, but I didn't remember what it was like. I don't remember if we liked it the first time at all. And that's a good thing because now we don't go, oh, well, we liked it the first time, so we're going to like it this time. It's very different. Anyway, I have a score. Do you have a score? I have a multitude of scores. You can only give one. So we're, we're, our, our premise is a standalone, just this as is. No yeah. pre preconceived notions. Yeah, 10 means it's the most spectacular thing ever and you would choose it above all others. One means you'd probably dump it. Everything in between makes it drinkable in varying degrees. All right, I got a number. You ready? One, two, three, five. five. <laughs> it's right, right in the middle. It's, it's, it's not great, yeah. it's not bad. It's just eh. Yeah. That, that's my take on it, it's just eh. And as hard as I try to to push out any preconceived notions, I still have that memory floating around in there of when we sampled the hibiscus mead as we were making our dance mod clone and going, oh my goodness, let's just stop here. Yeah. That's what That's I wanted what we this to for. be, and this is definitely not that. It's not, but you know what? It's okay because it's been a while too since we made, I mean, keep in mind, this was only made a year ago, but that recipe was from like a year before then. So in that two years, we've learned quite a bit about how to, you know, change flavors up, how to make things better, how to do adjuncts more, uh, all sorts of things that we do now that we really didn't mess around with much then. We kept it even simpler. So I could totally make a much better hibiscus mead now than we did then. And I, I think we're going to. That'll that'll be something that we end up doing. We, we can also so cheat. And just go rewatch our dance mod clone and just stop. But I believe this was the same thing, just more, more honey added. And I don't want to just make it sweeter. I, I want it to actually have more flavor and more taste. I want it to be more complex. So, He's got ideas. We, yeah. can, we cannot gonna... stop the creative process. We there must we encourage the creative process. So we will work on that. You guys, go, go watch another of our videos. Something that got like a 9 or a 10. Make that one. <laughs> When I fix this one, then you can come back and make this one, okay? But in the meantime, as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye. It's the, uh, the trifecta. It's all just playing with how that triangle fits together. Right now, our triangle is really, like, we have a very... Now, it, you get the point. It, there's just not enough sweetness here to balance <laughs> off the acidity and the tannins. But if there was more tannin, I don't think we'd need as... Pardon me while I turn this up. But if there was more tannins, I don't think...